afraid to slap some sense into any guests that gets out of line. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, program. My name is Dave Letterman, and uh, you have a good weekend? Yeah. Uh, what? Was it a good weekend, a great weekend? Great weekend. Uh, this is what I did over the weekend. I don't know how many of you have done this, but it's fun. I go up uh, to the South Bronx area on, on uh, <laughs> like Saturday and Sunday afternoon, and it's been great because here lately in New York, it's been unbelievably hot. and. Uh, <laughs> And I, I see how many domestic quarrels I can break up. That's what I... Right. Do, do I look a little, Paul, like a high school guidance counselor in this jacket? Uh -huh. I wasn't going to say it. Like Mr. Anderson, Hello, Bob Anderson, be, yeah. high school guidance. Yeah. Mr. L. Yeah. I'm um, having a problem, do what? Uh, Mr. L. Well, I just don't know exactly where to go with my career whether to go into music or that law thing, you know, uh -huh. that I could do. Well, how are your grades, son? Well, well I'm, I'm doing quite well, sir. I just, I'm not motivated in, in the academic areas anymore. That's another one of those, another one of those detours we take periodically. We take them without warning, but we come back. Yeah, we, yeah, we come back. Then we you come back. Now say, say we're going to drive to Kansas City. It doesn't mean you have to drive directly to no. Kansas City. No. You can go north. You can go south. Sometimes you can spend a couple of nights in La Jolla, for example. Right. We have, uh, we have a, a lovely woman visiting from uh, La Jolla, California, and she's just, uh, we're talking to her earlier. That don't... No, no. no. You don't, we don't want to show her because the woman lied to me earlier. <laughs> well, uh, oh good, show her again. <laughs> we'll fix her. Uh, Oliver North has received immunity now from uh, Congress, uh, also seeking immunity. I understand the producer of the film Ernest Goes to Camp, so that'll be interesting. <laughs> What else we have? <laughs> ah, go right to that. I think we'll go right to that. Go right to that. Yeah, I'm Mr. Ludlow, the high school guidance counselor. <laughs> have you thought about shop? Do you, do you like shop? Uh -huh. uh, in a press conference this morning, Jet Magazine officially named Jerry Cooney king of the big dopey white guys. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you, one and all. I don't know. I think, you know, with all due respect. How weekend? Did you have a good weekend? I, yeah, I did. I got a little sun over the weekend. Yeah? Just coming, I came down here, actually, and just hung out outside the building around the skating rink. And just the you know what's odd is this is a strange schedule that we're on now. Isn't it terrible? Very strange. The worst part about it is we don't know what to do with Monday. You see, now we're on from Tuesday through Friday, but we don't really know what to do with Monday. Monday is like you think you're working, but you're not really working. Yeah, you're not you really working. You do anything. Really, you're already yeah. worried about the week. and. Yeah. It's not like having Friday and just Well, it splitting. stinks. There's no getting around it. No. I think, though, with, with all... With all uh, well, thank you very uh -oh. much. Nice to see you. <laughs> little visitor. I just had a little visit there. A little visit there. A young lady just came over and visited me. Oh, nice. The lovely Barbara Gaines. Barbara just had a birthday, by the way. Yeah, 30. Oh, you don't care. I got to uh, say, though, with, with all due respect to, to Jerry Cooney, uh, Will was at the fight last night. Uh-huh. Uh, but I think I'm the big dopey white guy, though. So <laughs> don't you think? Come on. Whatever you want. All right. <laughs> now, let me, I want to, I want to, uh, I want to uh, start a little campaign here. It's coming up, and it happens every year, and I want to correct something. It's not Wimbledon, it's Wimbledon, okay? It's D with a D, Wimbledon. So it'll be coming up in a couple of weeks. Please pronounce it Wimbledon. Is that how you pronounce it? Everybody, 90% of the people who participate in the event say ton, Wimbledon. It's not. It's no. Wimbledon. Wimbledon. Now, we get that one straightened out, then we'll go on to, to nuclear. It's not nuclear, it's nuclear. <laughs> oh, this thing is working. We get plenty.
plenty of time. Top 10 is not ready. Oh, Doc is here. Doc is not here. Doc is here. Doc is not here. Anyway, when we get to it, tonight's top 10 category will be top 10 differences between my weekend and Bryant Gumbel's weekend. <laughs> you know, they, they changed producers of the Today Show about a week ago, and I heard, and I actually heard this rumor confirmed, that the reason the guy was fired, Bryant Gumbel, had the producer fired because he behaved in a discourteous manner to Bryant. That's what I heard. Yeah. Ready now? Ready? Not ready now. We're waiting. What, what part of it's not ready exactly? Some technical pieces of technical equipment? Yeah, it takes a long time to program this information. You know what's no exciting? How that top ten list comes in at the very, very right. last minute. It's it comes being written <laughs> via satellite from it's Scottsdale. <laughs> it's true, though. That's right. We're having some trouble with the downlink now. Written at the very, very last right. minute just, so it, that it's it current. It sizzles through the ionosphere and then uh, bounces into a machine there. So that it's as topical and current as, That's as right. it possibly... That's right. Fresh as today's headline. That's right. Fresh. Right up till airtime. You know, I got a problem. My, my neighbors, one of my neighbors where I live, nice enough people to have an enormous dog, lovely dog, beautiful animal, but the last, like, three weeks, the dog comes over to my house every night to sleep. Ah. So what do you do? You, you uh, have to sleep with him. <laughs> but, it, but, I mean, if you owned the dog, wouldn't you be worried that the, the animal vanished every evening at 9 and showed up the next morning around 10? Do <laughs> you think, like, he had a part-time job or something? <laughs> Animal digs to hang out with David Letterman. He just gets there. <laughs> Every yeah. night I hear this thump at yeah. my door, and, and there's this enormous animal, and he comes in, and I can't last night at, huh? We're ready to go? No, I'll, I'll finish this story later. But last night I literally, physically had to drag him out of the house, and he's enormous, and I picked him up, this big, huge thug of a dog, and I'm, I'm trying to pick him up like this and say, come on, it's time to go home, and the animal made this noise. <laughs> So if that sounds like your dog. Okay, here we go. Top 10 list. Right off the satellite from Scottsdale, Arizona. Stop it. Hey. Uh, top 10 differences between my weekend and Bryant Gumbel's weekend. Number 10. I didn't arrange my cologne alphabetically. Number 9. I didn't send network brass list of co-workers who make personal phone calls at work. Number eight, I didn't spend Saturday fondling fabric swatches. Number seven, Bryant didn't work selflessly as volunteer candy striper. Number six, I didn't mow lawn wearing only a Rolex. Number five, I didn't hang around mall saying hi, recognize me. Number four, didn't make phone calls to older brother taunting him about his comparatively tiny salary. Number three, my entourage wasn't afraid to speak their minds. Right, Paul? Uh, right, 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 Dave. Okay. Number two, uh, to picture Willard Scott nude, I had to use my imagination. <laughs> and the number one difference between my weekend and Brian Gumbel's weekend, I didn't have to go to bed at dinner time Sunday so I could be up at dawn to host a cartoon show. Okay, we're going to show you tonight, we do this <coughs> periodically <coughs> as a service to our home viewers. We're going to show you what other programs you could be watching on other channels simultaneous to this one. So if for one reason or another you don't like what you see here tonight on NBC, we'll show you what other shows you could be watching. Here we go. Do we have music for this, Paul? Or I got a little, yeah. I got a little uh, something I'm working on. There's NBC and CBS and a little thing called Fox. <laughs> That's as far as I got so far with this. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> what's on other channels? Here, here's our first offering. Tonight it's on Channel 5 here in New York. And let's take a look at it here. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a commercial for Bojangles' new chili bar. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> Not a uh, program at all. Uh, next on CNN tonight, uh, Miami Herald reporters check out unbelievable rumors that George Bush still sleeps with his wife. That's what they're doing there. Reporters from the Miami Herald. Yeah, I'm certainly glad you enjoyed that one. <coughs> <laughs> That's my neighbor's dog. That's the noise my neighbor's dog made last night. Uh, next on ESPN, following last night's fight, an angry fan who paid $500 for a ringside seat gets back at Jerry Cooney. 
Uh, next, an offering on PBS, This Old House, Bob and Norm, the guys from This Old House, show you a cool way to meet girls at the beach. <laughs> Take your, your house down to the beach there, like that. Uh, fine. Uh, on Nickelodeon, we have uh, a look at something new for kids. It's uh, bubblegum trading cards featuring members of the Koch administration. <laughs> I'm dating Beth Meyerson, by the way. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Your problems I'm are sorry. over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on CBS tonight, it's a special, the 20th anniversary of Charles Kuralt on the road. And, oh, oh look, here... Here he runs into Walter Mondale. I'll be doing it. <laughs> All right, uh, the next one we have here, this is, uh, is, you know, I don't, how, how, what is that exactly? Uh, I don't know, Dave, but the boys in the control will want to see it pretty bad. Watch <laughs> it. <laughs> pretty bad. Thank you, Thank you very much. They want nice reading, Hal. Bad. Here we go. Uh, on ABC's Nightline tonight, it's exclusive footage of Jim Baker on his way to interview a new church secretary. <laughs> and uh, finally, on Channel 9 tonight, this is At the Movies, and here I think we have a clip of the tragic ending of the new Benji film. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Uh, we One of these sunbathers is a Fuji picture. Can you spot which one? Fuji Super HR film has ultra thin color layers for truer color than we've ever had before. For pictures so alive, they almost breathe. Get Fuji Super HR film. Now get Super HR in the first ready to use 35 millimeter camera. Fuji Quick Snap. Uh, our first guest, oh, <laughs> could this guy shoot pool? I mean, it was poetry oh. in motion. Whenever, Minnesota skeptics. Whenever skeptics would take yeah. the old chalk and the stick in his hand. Anyway, uh, he's here tonight with an assortment of medical devices that will at once amaze, entertain, and inform you. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the true essence of American television. <laughs> Please welcome Robert W. McCoy. Mr. McCoy. Hi, hey, Robert. How are you? Hi, Good to have you here. Thank you. We have... Uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of stuff, and before we take a look at the items you've brought, tell us about the organization, the Minnesota Skeptics. Well, we're part of the Committee for the Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal, a group of about 50 groups throughout the world. You debunk claims and, and well, stories about... Uh, about things like UFOs, mm -hmm. astrology... Quackery. Out of, quackery, yeah. out-of-body experiences, and so forth. So we've collected a lot of things from the Bakken Library in Minneapolis, some of these from my own collection, mm -hmm. from the Federal Drug Administration, okay. things that have been seized. But this is our and, premier and, and thing And all here. of this stuff, uh, these are all at one time thought to be medical instruments. Oh, yes. They yes. are widely believed and followed and have a lot of people who spend mm. a lot of time inventing and developing and making money on them. Believed in by the mainstream, you think? Well, that's hard to tell. Okay. Chronology certainly was. All right, let's uh, take a look. This is the first item here? Were. Yes, this was invented by a man in Superior, Wisconsin, who spent his life building 44 of them. Mm -hmm. The company lasted about three years in the late 30s, or early 20s and early 30s, mm -hmm. and uh, folded. And they've been sitting in a warehouse for some 50 years. We have about 16 of them left. We this is what, this. The, the precursor to the helicopter? Uh, well, <laughs> it looks that way. <laughs> We do this at a place in Minneapolis called River Place, entertaining people. I have eight phrenologists at work for me. Ph phrenology is, of course... It's the science of studying character by the bumps on your head. Uh -huh. That Com was... Uh, complete, in, completely uh, bogus, right? Yes. Uh, completely, that was uh, invented by a Viennese physician in 1798 when mm -hmm. he mapped out the brain. He knew that the temple was the source of your musical talent because you used to see pictures of Mozart composing mm -hmm. music in the 1790s, leaning on his piano with his knuckle against here. So he wrote that down. That's uh, time and mm -hmm. tune. He knew that the area above the head was acquisitiveness because two pickpockets of his acquaintance had large bumps there. So, so it was, all of it is pretty much random association then? Well, it was what you and I would call anecdotal information. Anecdotal. Had one example of each thing. And in the old days, they used, to, they used to measure people's head manually and write things down. But a man in Wisconsin, Henry Lavery and Frank White this, in this Minneapolis... This with the machine. Is there, oh, yes, this fire is very this scientific. Is there anything Sit to do right with? down here. Yeah. This is the back. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, thank you very uh, much. Well, 
Excuse me, what a helpful piece of information. I was studying your staff today, and they all sat on it sideways. That's uh -huh. what I mentioned to you that that's the okay. back. Now look straight, this will tickle when it comes down. Right. Now there's, there's, no, there's no current or anything passing through here. Well, there? yes, there is. There's oh, six, there is. There's six <laughs> volts. Six volts are going to go right through my skull? Yes. But it's like this. <laughs> now look straight ahead. Uh, well, you got to keep your head straight like that. All right, well, I'm a, I'm a little edgy. Okay. You won't feel anything. Yeah. Now, we center that on your nose. I'm telling you, I didn't kill the hitchhiker. I didn't kill the hitchhiker. It's too late. Now, in 30 seconds, this is going to measure your head. If I do die, there's going to be a class action suit. You folks promise me that? Well, we... <laughs> Thank you. Now, this is actually measuring your head and rating your character one through five. Uh -huh. One being deficient, five being superior. I see. Are we done? We no, it's still running. Oh, Just sit tight. Uh, it, can it do anything about the part in my hair? Well, uh, <laughs> we can give it a Marcel wave if you'd like. Oh, oh Marcel yeah. wave. All right. Just, just get me out of here. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh, I enjoyed that. Now, I, feel, I, feel, I feel refreshed. This is all about One you. Minute. All about me. Let's see. Various things here. Uh, human nature. Good. You have a good amount of uh, intuition, but occasionally you make mistakes in judging the character and motives of others. Is that true? Well, it's certainly true in this case, okay. isn't it? Well, let me show you some other things. <laughs> this is a device called the blood rub. I'm about the same era. It's mm -hmm. something to make hair grow. Uh -huh. And you put it, put and it on you your head? you put this on your head. <laughs> uh, stand around here. <laughs> wow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And uh, this is... <laughs> Could you, could you leave that in the up, uh, office for a couple of days? Well, if you'd like to, certainly. Now, this is uh, from the 1880s. Now, that, that did again nothing, right? Uh, well, it does massage the head, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make hair grow. <laughs> okay. This is a famous electric belt. Ah, the electric belt. This is... Uh, Remember seven, the old days, you had to put them on by hand and do that to injure... Well, look, it, I, have an old, I have an old manually operated belt here. Look at... I'm exhausted after I do that. Well, no more thanks to this beauty here. Uh, this uh, is able to restore manhood. Uh, it has a copper plate in the back. <laughs> Electric belt. It has um, brass in the front and lead, uh, and you put this on with some chemicals that tend to uh, <laughs> cause blisters and make you think something's happening, uh -huh. and this suppensatory here hangs down in your genital area and provides... <laughs> Provides negative electricity if you have a weak member. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> you don't want to put this on. A weak but, member. Uh, this is a little uh, more... I tell you what, we're going to do a commercial and then uh, we'll be right back. Right. We have plenty more of this stuff. We'll, we'll be right back. You live up in Minnesota, huh? Yes. Yeah, what part? In Minneapolis. Oh, Minneapolis is a great city. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. What else have you got well, here? Well, this is an ultraviolet light generator mm -hmm. from the Bakken Library in Minneapolis. And what this does, it generates ultraviolet light to cure dander. We, uh, wow, it generates a little electricity there, yeah. here. Yes, it does uh, generate electricity. Put you your hand it? there. Can you feel that? Oh, yeah, just barely. Yeah, you can feel it. Yeah. You see how it uh, yeah. works? Well, this would go in your hair. Ah, if, uh, woo! <laughs> hey, hey, hold it. Wait a minute. That's great. That wakes hey, up in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But uh, again, that has no uh, real. Could that do harm? Could any of these well, things you actually could get harm? Well, a it? shock from it if you yeah. were standing in water, I mm -hmm. guess. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> these are diet. I suppose all that's cleared up with the instructions, right? Yes. Yeah. These are uh, seized items from the FDA. These are a pair of glasses that make you lose weight. Mm -hmm. You look through them. Wear them an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening. Don't drive your car while they're on. They have a secret European process to coat the lens to make you lose weight. Uh -huh. and, and how would that work? I mean, even making something up, how would they think that well, that would work? Maybe you'd throw up after you'd eat or something. I don't know, but I can't find how they work. So they were seized by the FDA as a complete fraud. Uh -huh. Now, here's something. This seized? You make it sound like they busted in someplace oh, they, with well, machine they, guns. They, uh, <laughs> All right, give up those glasses. <laughs> Uh, that, that's just about the strangest, because this has no, even if we're a stretch of the imagination, well, no connection. Uh, but they sold a lot of them. You know, I feel a little thinner, though. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm not as hungry as I usually am. So. <laughs> Maybe you Season. discovered the secret. Elliot Ness busted in. And this is a cool paint to put on your head. This acts as a heat sink if your brain gets cold. This is something... <laughs> 
or if your brain gets hot. That's from well, the 1880s. Is, is, if your brain gets hot or cold? Yes, if your brain, brain gets hot. It gets too hot. That uh, acts as a heat sink, takes the uh, heat out of your brain uh -huh. if you have a headache or neuralgia, something like that. Yeah. You know, in these energy-conscious times, about what temperature should we keep our brain? <laughs> <laughs> now, here's a device that uh, will send either negative or positive electricity to your ear to cure various things. I'll just touch this to your ear, I bet you and will. Uh, you will feel here. Uh, <laughs> now, now, wait a minute. What am I going to feel? Let me, let me see it before you touch it up there. Actually, nothing well, happens. That's right here. Push it against there. And that's it? But that's the dial you jumps up, and that uh -huh. makes you think something's happening. All right. And again, this would be for... If you have problems with your ear, lungs, uh, if you have a problem with your kidney, we push it over there, and we can change it to negative electricity if you have problems with your, with your uh, feet. Yeah. Now, now, how recently was this, uh, well, this stuff was, being sold? This was uh, something the FDA took off the market about seven or eight years no ago. No kidding. So yes. that's fairly recent, isn't it? This is rather contemporary. See, they only began we have seizing about one element. minute here. Uh, oh, well, this is the most fun. This is a breast enlarging device. Uh, we had the belt for the men, and this was for the ladies. It's something you had a foot pedal here. You worked on this and put your finger over here and pumped on it, and it did uh, cause your breast to. Uh, grow slightly uh, <laughs> if you kept doing it for a very long time. Yeah. Also cause your head to implode, I would uh, guess. I would think it would too. <laughs> uh, this is a recent seizure also. These are illegal to sell these now, things. Is this the kind of thing that might have been sold out of the back of a magazine, a mail order yes. kind of a deal? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They were uh, good theater, but that's about it. Yeah, and you, ha you have a, a whole collection of this? A stuff? modest number of these things. Yeah. Uh, we keep them at River Place and other places to entertain people and have fun with. The Bakken Library is set up just to collect these sorts of things, and the FDA has a large amount of things they've seized. Yeah, great. Well, listen, I appreciate you bringing this stuff down here. You're but welcome. we do want to keep this for a couple of weeks. This one right here. <laughs> nice to meet you, Robert. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. We, we got to pause for station. <laughs>